Hey and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine and thanks so much for stopping by. Today is my Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge where we take items from the garbage or recyclable items and turn them into treasure. Something that is useful, a piece of home decor, anything to give it a second life and keep it out of the landfill. So if you'd like to see what I made then please keep watching. First I am starting with the scrap board and these a cute little snowflake they're like i don't know kind of foamy um pieces from the dollar tree and some scrapbook paper and i got this from hobby lobby i thought this would be cute to use up the scrap board um to make like a little winter or um like christmas sign i guess it's more wintry than christmas but so I'm just taking this scrapbook paper and I'm going to be cutting it in half because I want the, um, the buffalo check to go down the center of the board. And this week was not my week to craft. Every project I tried to do or that I did, it just something happened to it that it didn't work out or <laughs> it got ruined. I just, it was really hard for me this week for some reason. I don't know, am I the only one that ever has weeks like that where it doesn't matter what you craft? It just doesn't turn out. So anyway, I am taking that scrapbook paper and I'm just using some Mod Podge to attach it to the board. And of course I'm just eyeballing it and lining it up instead of measuring, but that's okay. Makes it look a little bit more rustic, right? <laughs> so then I'm doing the same for the top piece. And I've been told different tips and tricks um, when using Mod Podge. And this one I always use now. It's like the best tip I ever got was to spray down the paper or fabric that you're using before you put the Mod Podge on because it makes it so you can kind of slide it back and forth and get it where you want it to be before it like seals to the piece. <laughs> So then I'm just taking some sandpaper and roughing up the edges a little bit and smoothing them out. And then I also did it on the scrapbook paper a little bit too soon. It wasn't dry yet. I was just being impatient and it tore in a few different spots. So just don't look at those. <laughs> So then I'm taking those snowflakes and I'm um, lining them up with the edges because all three wouldn't fit, um, you know, fully as one piece. So I'm just cutting off the little pieces that hung over. And these little snowflakes are so cute and they're so easy to work with. I apologize for the lighting. It was at night when I was doing this. So then I'm just taking that snowflake and adding a little bit of Mod Podge. You could use like Elmer's glue or anything here. And I'm just doing um, a decent coat on here because I'm going to be adding some glitter. And I also got a really good tip from um, one of my subscriber friends from my last video to use glittered nail polish. And I thought that was just brilliant because I don't know, my husband hates glitter. So the glittered nail polish would work awesome and I guess you could even take like paint or Mod Podge and add the glitter to the paint or Mod Podge I don't know if that would work but worth a try <laughs> so I just coated out the um, all three of the snowflakes with the Mod Podge and glitter and this is this was another struggle I was having where my camera kept dying on me but anyway, um, I, when I used the hot glue gun to attach the snowflake, it left these little like indentions and it looked horrible. So I just used Mod Podge for the rest of it. And if you can look past all the boo-boos and <laughs> mess ups, I think it looks really cute. So let me know what you guys think of this one. So 
For this next one, you can use a pot that you've had. This is one I just never ended up using. A little jingle bell from the Dollar Tree. And I had this little wood bead from craftparts.com and a scrap chunk of dowel rod. And then I'm using Arteza paints because those are the ones that I have in like metallic colors. And then um, also an acrylic paint and the hot glue gun. Also this ribbon um, I thought of last minute. So <laughs> you could also use twine if you wanted. So this one went through many changes. <laughs> I first started with this gold, which I thought was very pretty. but it wasn't what I had in my head, if that makes sense. I don't know, I'm, I'm really starting to like gold more than I used to. Um, I don't do so much silver, but I like like the bronze look or like rose gold or coppery. I don't know, I'm, I'm still working towards just straight gold. <laughs> so I took that dowel rod and just sanded it down. And if you could tell from the picture, we're just making a bell. So this is going to be the handle for the bell. So I'm just going to paint it with um, a little bit of black and brown paint mixed. And this is all preference, the colors that you use, the, you know, whatever, <laughs> the pot that you use. I just, when I saw um, that little pot. I didn't want to get rid of it. Um, I guess I could have donated it, but I, for some reason, thought of a little bell and thought it would be perfect for Christmas and winter time. So anyway, I'm just taking that little um, jingle bell from the Dollar Tree and some ribbon, and I'm just pulling it through um, the little pot, and it makes different noises depending on how high you have the bell. So I liked how it sounded with it hanging a little bit. So I'm just going to attach the ribbon on the bottom with um, some hot glue. And you want to work kind of fast because you don't want the hot glue to dry because it gets, you know, kind of bubbly and um, you'll see it through the ribbon. So I didn't work fast enough, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> And I did that on both sides. And you could use um, like E6000 or whatever glue, you know, if you want it to be like permanent. But hot glue dries really fast, so it's perfect for these little crafts. And then I'm taking some Mod Podge and running it on the underneath side of the ribbon because I want it to, um, you know, go down the entire pot or the bell. Um, just to give it a little bit of texture because like I said this bell went through many changes I decided I wanted to paint it a different color after the ribbons were on <laughs> so I, I painted it um, like a copper color because I wanted it to have like I don't know the the effects of the ribbon I wanted it to stand out but I also wanted it to be the same color as the pot or bell. So as I was painting this, I saw that if I like dabbed it on like this, it gave it a really cool texture. So I just did that all the way around. I would have used a better paintbrush, but I am horrible with rinsing out my paintbrushes. So I've ruined a lot, which kind of bums me out. I just got to get better at rinsing them out. Um, so this is the one I had on hand, but it worked perfect. And then I just took some of the darker brown color and ran it along the edges of the bell just to give it like an antiqued look. And then I'm taking some hot glue and attaching the handle to the top. And this, um, you might want to use a better glue as well. 
like a E6000 or something. That way it holds a lot better. And then because it looked kind of boring to me, I just added some lavender. Oh, and this ball. I wanted to fill in the top so that I could paint it over and it didn't look like a bead. <laughs> so I um, just put some hot glue in there and let it dry. And then I am taking some of this twine and just wrapping it around the bottom edge because I didn't want any of the glue poking through. So it just kind of camouflages it. So in my last video, I asked how many of you, you know, like live in states where there's winter and snow and stuff. And so many of you have said you already have gotten snow this year, which is insane to me. We were supposed to get flurries this morning, but we didn't get anything. But it's just so early, even though I'm kind of excited for the first snowfall. <laughs> I was just really surprised how many of you already have gotten a good amount of snow. So I attached the lavender because I love lavender, it doesn't matter what time of year. <laughs> and then I attached the bead. You can use um, wood glue here, it would hold it a lot better. And then I just coated the top part with the brownish blackish paint that I used for the handle. And then attached the other piece of lavender and a little bow. And I didn't show it on camera because I was having a heck of a time with the camera um, with space and the battery running out just everything was just not working for me <laughs> but anyway I attached this little acorn and I have a video on how I made those super super simple but I think they're really cute I put them on a Christmas tree but I thought they looked really cute on this too those books I made in a video last year and also the sign <laughs> for this last one I am using this roll from wrapping paper it's not like your typical cardboard roll it's kind of like paper um, so you're gonna need something like that a paper towel roll tape a ruler and I'm using magazine pages but you could also use like wrapping paper um, that you know you don't have enough to wrap presents or whatever but I got this idea from a website I will link it below but these are the sizes that you're gonna need for this size of a tree I don't know if you saw that in the thumbnail but it's a cute little cone tree so you're going to need um, six inch pieces five inch pieces and four inch pieces and each layer I think I used nine or ten cones and for the ones where it said you'll need five inch squares um, you're gonna need two layers of that so like say 20 cones so I'm starting with the six inch cone and <laughs> this was like the simplest thing to do but I could not get it to stay I'll link the lady's um, website. She explains it really well. I was just having a heck of a time. So I finally got it to stay. <laughs> and then you just tape it. And then with the um, paper towel roll or um, wrapping paper roll, you want it to be standing up. That way you kind of know where to place your first row because you want those to hit the ground because it's going to be kind of what holds it up. And I use tape. I guess you could use like hot glue or whatever, but the tape worked really well. And I just went around um all of the bottom and i think it's super cute it could be like a little skirt too <laughs> so then i moved on to the five inch that first row was the six inch squares this is going to be the five inch squares and you want to place the second row in between um your first row's cones if that makes sense if it doesn't go to the lady's website where i got it 
Like I said, she explains it really well. She has some really cute ones, but I just wanted to give it a try myself. So then you just go all the way around. And here is the third row. The, um, this is the next set of five inch squares or cones. And you wanna stagger them. You don't want them lining up with um, the last row. And you want them to be about an inch to an inch and a quarter apart from the last row. And finally, at the end, I found out what worked with these cones and it made it a lot easier. I just put tape on the side that you're rolling towards and then that way you just keep rolling the cone and it just kind of tapes itself. So that was really helpful. I wish I would have learned that trick <laughs> earlier on in this project. For the last layer, which is the four inch squares, you're going to attach the cones by wrapping them over the top of the cardboard roll. Doing the same thing as you did with the other rows where you stagger the cones from the last row. And for mine, you can leave it like this, super cute, especially if you were using um, like holiday or festive wrapping paper. I'm going to paint mine green. So it actually looks like a tree and I'm not being super perfect here because I kind of want it look, to look like rustic-ish, I guess. That's not even a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so while that front part is drying, this is the paint I'm going to use to paint over it and some glitter. I'm also using some baking soda. And I made this bow so I could put it at the top. And I'm out in my garage because it is actually raining and really cold outside right now. And I'm just giving this kind of like a spotty coat of white to look like snow. And then I'm using this adhesive spray. This is all kind of experimental, so I'm hoping it works. <laughs> I just gave it a light coat because this stuff is so sticky. And then I'm using some baking soda and sprinkling it over the top to kind of be like snowish. It seemed to work well and I t touched the tree a little bit ago and it wasn't like um, the powder wasn't coming off and the glitter wasn't coming off. So then I don't know where the footage went but I did spray another coat of the adhesive spray and then I'm just adding the glitter over the top. I don't know something about like frosty snowy trees just looks so pretty and cozy to me. So then I brought it in after it dried and I'm attaching this bow to the very top. And it, if you're one that can make really pretty, like those big extravagant bows, I think this would look fabulous on the top and then it would cover up the hole. Or you could put like a cute little bell, but this is what I ended up with for now. I'll, I'm gonna try and figure out a topper, like a star or something. But let me know what you guys think. And don't forget, there is a playlist that is listed in my description box for everybody else that participated in this challenge in this using trash to create treasure challenge um, don't forget to check them out i hope you really enjoyed this thanks so much for watching guys stay safe take care and i'll see you next time bye